up you guys, it's your boy the Kryptonian Saiyan here, bringing you a review for One Piece chapter 199, and gotta say man, very impressed with two things in this chapter, the first thing I'm very impressed with the characterization, the character development, particularly the just continued fleshing out of the chemistry between the Straw Hat Pirates, that was really nice to see, you see all of them kind of convening to uh, join Luffy and BV as they're getting ready to face Crocodile. And just seeing that and then seeing the way that BV, you know, she's crying, she's wiping the tears away, and she's saying, I'm not alone, that was cool. I like just a little, little small glimpses that we saw of interaction between all of them, like with Nami. She's like, oh, I feel so faint, Zoro, carry me. Even though in her last fight, when she got shot through the leg, or the not the leg, but through the, uh, look like the calf muscle, when she got shot through there, not a problem, not a problem at all. She's kind of continues on doing her own thing, fighting, and Zoro's carrying her, and Zoro even says, you fake her. So just to see Zoro just uber pissed off when Nami is on her feet, bossing people around, taking... Uh, questions, trying to gather information about what's going on. She asked BB at one point what's going on with the sandstorm and then she just knocks Usopp in the back of the head. So now you see from Zoro to Nami to Nami to Usopp where she says, I asked you to make me a weapon, not a fucking party favor. That, that was cool. And how Usopp then turns around, interacts with Nami and then interacts with Chopper. He tells Nami, hey, you figured it out, didn't you? She says, I'm going to kill you. Chopper uh, starts saying, oh my God, she killed you because Usopp is putting on this huge act and saying, Chopper, just bury my body in the woods. She's going to kill me. Like just seeing all of that and then seeing how that plays off and gets Sanji to kind of snap at Zoro. Just seeing everything. They're like one big dysfunctional family. The little small things that might not seem like much, but it's enough to where when you read it, you have a smile on your face. You can't help but wonder where this group is going to grow coming for or going forward so that was pretty cool but obviously the main star of this chapter is monkey d luffy the big thing about luffy right the really big thing is is not only does he save vivi but it looks like he's riding on uh pal's back and when he gets uh, not luffy when he gets vivi to safety you know he reassures her right so once again we see more of his uh, leadership skills coming out. You know, first thing he does is de-stress the situation. That's what you're supposed to do anytime you're in any source of conflict. You're supposed to de-stress, keep it from escalating if possible. You know, there's one thing I have to work on is, you know, when I see someone is really, 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 really upset and it's over something stupid, I can't help but say you're stupid and this is why you're stupid. So. That's something I work on, but in Luffy's case, Luffy checked himself and was like, look, I had some meat. I ate all I could eat. I'm good and ready to go. You got nothing to worry about. You see those guys over there? Yeah, they took care of all those numbered guys. We just got to take care of Crocodile. And at first I'm thinking, okay, I know meat gives you the regeneration powers. It's kind of meat for Luffy. It's kind of like a... Uh, Sensu bean or some Sensu DNA. Oh, not Sensu, uh, Sensu DNA. So just seeing that, I'm like, okay, Luffy got a small power increase or rather he got restored to full strength, whichever one you want to take. Because when you look at when he fought Crocodile the first time, he was coming off of the uh, fight with uh, Mr. Three, I believe. Yeah it, was Mr. yeah, it was Mr. Three. And then you're traveling long distances, you know, heat. You know, exhaustion, I give him all of that. He had a chance to kind of recover. And at first when he hit Crocodile, I'm thinking, damn, he managed to get a solid hit on him. And at first I'm going, did he just get faster? Because the weakness from what I've seen is when he uses those gum gum uh, attacks, unless he's literally using it like rubber to where... You like kind of pull back and you snap. Luffy's attacks don't have the most speed to them, even with the uh, bazooka and all that. It takes time. If from just from the way it's drawn, 
it looks like it takes time to work up speed, but once it hits speed, you have to watch out. It's not like, I guess the best way I can put it, it's not like what you see like in the uh, Dragon Ball universe where uh, Frieza's uh, death beams are actually faster than any other type of key attack that is in that universe because they're so small, but at the same time, he's naturally fast, his key release is faster. So it's kind of the same thing with this. Like it looks like Luffy's attack has potential to be really, really fast, but it still seems like he's working out some kinks. But what really impressed me was the fact that Luffy realized, hey, when Crocodile has water on, you can hit him. And Luffy does a really smart thing. It looks like he soaked his hands and arms in water, and that gives him an opportunity to grab on a Crocodile and just hit him. So. That was that was interesting. That was interesting. Like, and I like how Luffy says that's why you're really scared of the rain. So, in a way, Crocodile being at Alabasta on one end, that's the perfect place because it's sand, it's hot, it's for the most part kind of separated a little bit, and it's a country that was divided. So it had all the makings for a perfect storm, but at the same time. Because there was rain and you had that rain stuff, the, the rain powder that was going on, if somebody figured that out. And the thing about life is when people start seeing more than one instance, like or coincidence, they say, oh, this is what really goes on. And then they put two and two together. People, for the most part, most people are fucking stupid. But at the same time, most people, once they see something happen more than once, they catch on to it. And at that point, it really comes down to whether or not you choose to act on it or you choose to remain ignorant. So I like how Luffy kind of pointed that out and just seeing Crocodile's expression. That was pretty cool. I think that I think that he's already made the connection that Miss All Sunday has helped Luffy because he asked him, like, how did you get out of the quicksand? And Miss All Sunday's flower fruit ability, that would that would definitely fit in but you know overall very good pacing the characterization that's what impressed me more about all this plot progression okay okay plus somewhere around there but my chapter question for you guys is gonna be this out of all of the little quirks with the straw hats this chapter right with Nami and Usopp's scene Zoro and Sanji scene Chopper and Usopp scene Nami and Usopp uh, which one of those impressed you the most? Which one and why? But that's it for this review. If you like anything I had to say, hit that like button, comment, rate, subscribe, share. I will greatly appreciate it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.